Hi, I'm Moss here with my report on the 2017 Spring Fuji Avic Headphone Festival in Tokyo. As usual, the event was spread over five floors of Nakano Sun Plaza with hundreds of manufacturers represented and, and thousands of products. Now, it was impossible to cover all of it, but I did manage to have a look and listen to some of the latest and most interesting products. Now, as usual, there were some surprises, and my first was to run straight into Jerry Harvey of JH Audio outside the building before the show. He joined us for our regular pre-show coffee meet and brought with him four pairs of the new Lolas. Now, the focus of the Lolas is around the pair of dynamic drivers for the mids, which is an unusual combination, and that is where I found them to have their strength, with great vocal and instrument reproduction during my brief listen. Now, the bass was, as usual, for a JH IEM, fantastic. And the treble wasn't as dark as on the Roxanne's and the Layla's, which was very pleasing to hear. Now, Jerry had so many interesting things he said about them, so I asked if he would come and shoot a quick video about them, as the story behind them is quite interesting. And here's what he had to say. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Amos this morning, and I'm going to go over my new product, Lola. Lola is the first hybrid I've designed since 2005 when I was at my old company. The major difference between that hybrid and this hybrid is that hybrid was a low diaphragm and a single balanced armature. Developed that product called the 5EB. Basically not because I was looking for any more bass response, but we were looking to see how we could build a cheaper earphone because balanced armatures were $12 and diaphragms were 25 cents, so we took a lot of cost out. That being said, it was called the 5EB. It was on the market for about six months and I canceled it because there were serious phase issues with it and I didn't think it represented the product line and didn't like the audio of it. So let's fast forward to 2017. This particular piece is called Lola. The big difference is, is uh, technology has progressed a lot. I now have been using the Freak Phase Waveguide for a few years, which is putting everything within the hundredths of a millisecond um, at, the, at the end of the tip. So there's no phase cancellation at the crossover points. All right, so I spent all of 16 developing a multi-driver diaphragm earpiece. And I wasted all of 16 because that product never came to fruition because it basically sucked. I couldn't get anything to work except for the mid-range. I found that with these particular diaphragms, these high output little diaphragms that I was using, that the sweet spot was the mid-range between 200 hertz and 3K. It gave a tonality a depth to the mix and it sounded very analog and uh, it sounded very natural and real. So as I d discovered that I wanted to use just the mid-range I decided to start using a couple different configurations and the best configuration I came up with that I could actually fit into an earpiece was two balanced armatures for subs lows from basically 10 hertz to 200 hertz. Then I did a very sharp high pass and wiped all the lows out of the mids from 200 to 3K is what the mid band, the two diaphragms reproduce. And then I used the quad high out of the Layla and, uh, and so there was, so basically two balanced armatures, two 4.9 millimeter diaphragms, which basically equals 9.8 millimeters of cone for the mid range and the quad high, which like I said, is from the Layla. When I put this configuration together, I immediately realized that guitars, snare drums, vocals, both female and male, piano, everything in that mid-band really came to life and sounded very natural. So I called up a um, guitar player from Guns N' Roses, Slash, and he was on the Roxanne's, and he said that the Roxanne's were doing very well for him, but his guitar didn't sound exactly how it did coming out of his Marshall cabinets. So I sent him a set of uh, prototype Lola's, we went through four different crossover revisions and he's been using those for about four months live on the Guns N' Roses tour and loves the way that the guitar and everything is represented in the mid band. So he says this sounds exactly how his Marshall sound as it comes out. So that's kind of a good testament to how these mid, the mid range uh, reacts and the, the tonality of, of this, this dual diaphragm. Um, I created what's called I don't know, somebody coined it DOME, D-O-M-E, which is Dual Opposing Mid Enclosure. Basically, I took the two 4.9 millimeter diaphragms, put them face to face, controlled the, um, the volume of air between the two diaphragms because depending on the volume of air, how close or how far apart these two diaphragms are together, you can adjust the high mid frequency response. So we dialed that in and uh, started doing SLA parts for that, ended up with a very nice mid range. 
Um, so the dual opposing mid enclosure. So by doing that, it actually was a pseudo bandpass also. So by putting the, those together, high passing electronically, with passive components obviously, and the actual enclosure started to roll off at about 4K. So then all I had to do was put a little bit more inductance there and a little dampening to actually make it a very nice shape for that mid-range. I had to retune the high crossover point of the Layla High so it actually reproduces lower than it does in any of my other earpieces. The other thing that happens with this earpiece is because it's the first piece that I've actually high passed the mid band. So if you, you know, all of the the part the products I make these days have adjustable bass response. If you set this the attenuators at 12 o'clock left and right, that is zero dB. That is a very that is perfectly flat bottom response. If you go to one o'clock, that's plus three, two o'clock plus six, wide open is plus fifteen. So you basically can go between 12 noon and wide open is a sweet spot. If you go below 12 noon, you remove bass and you can actually turn down the bass drivers where there's nothing below 200 hertz. So think about that. Just in my other my products, you turn the bass drivers down, the mid drivers still cover the low band. With this product, it doesn't. You lose all the bass response. So don't go below to the left of noon. Let me show you what I've got here. This is the new case that the Lola ships in. It's all billet aircraft aluminum, kind of Zippo style. This is the actual Lola universal set. It's obviously 3D printed, the waveguide's in here, and it, there are um, lightning strike carbon fiber face plates, as you can see. Once again, fully adjustable base response. This is just a set of my Lolas with some custom artwork. Uh, Mother of Pearl with some black stripes on just a black shell. And then we're doing these one-off pieces, which, you know, I think there's only probably me and one other person might end up with them, but I've got a set, so these are pretty cool. This is basically a set of hand engraved, first of all, carbon fiber shells. They're one of one. These will always, there will never be two alike of these particular earpieces. And I'm working with master engraver Jeff Park. And look how sick this is. These are surgical grade stainless steel face plates that we handmade. We sent them to Jeff and he engraved these skulls in there with the headphones on them. And then all this gold is actually 24 karat inlay. So he did all of this by hand and the precision and the art is just insane with this guy. So these are one of a kind. And you know, you, if you want to give us a call, we can do any kind of concept you want with this guy. The next set that we're making, we're actually making a set for Slash. It's going to have a skull with a top hat and it'll be up on Instagram in about a month or so. So it'll be pretty cool. So the other thing is that if you look at the case, it's the same case as the Lola, except for since it's a carbon fiber shell, it's got a carbon fiber faceplate. And also, once again, Zippo style. And this, the cool part about this is that if you look at the back, this is everybody that was involved in handcrafting this earpiece. So you will have whoever built this earpiece for you. It's one of one for whoever decides they want to have something like this done. And it will list every one of our craftsmen, including Jeff Park, who actually is the guy that does all the engraving. Uh, and that's kind of it. That's what we're doing these days. We do a bunch of different options. Our artwork, we've stepped up considerably because I thought, you know, we always had some really good audio quality. So I wanted to make sure that our fit and finish was above everybody else's out there. So I think we've stepped that up. If you take a look at our Instagram, you'll see that the, I've got some young talent in the art department and they've really done a great job with it. So. That's about all I've got to say. Hopefully uh, I gave you some good information and uh, I didn't ramble too long. Thanks.